Just as we had seen that the Patents Act does have a definitional clause, section 2 of the Patents Act deals with definition and interpretation. Likewise, Patent Rules 2 has a clause that pertains to definition. The three things which we had discussed about the kinds of definition that the definition 1, it may define the word or the phrase within the clause itself. The second kind of definition is where it gives a cross reference to another part of the act. And the third type of reference definition is where the definition refers to an other act and we saw instances in the Patents Act 1970. Now the patent rules has certain definitions but most of these definitions will relate back to what is already been said in the act. For instance, rule 2A, act means the Patents Act. So, wherever the act is used, we note it refers to the Patents Act. Appropriate office B defines appropriate office which means the patent office as specified in rule 4. Again, we see reference to another part of the rule. So, if you need to understand what an appropriate office is, you would look into rule 4. Uh, then uh, you have form means a form specified in the second schedule and second schedule is the schedule that deals with the forms that have to be used before the patent office. Then you have uh, other definitions. Now, you will note here that there is uh, after D, you have D A and D B and then it continues with E F and so uh, then you have F A. Now, this sequence tells us that D A and D B were introduced by way of an amendment. So, the footnote will tell you by which amendment this was introduced. So, as we mentioned, uh, the amendments to the rules are much more frequent and are easier. So, you find that wherever uh, a detail needs to be added, it is usually done in the rules. Then you have other definitions like schedule, what does a schedule mean, a section means a section of the act. Then small entity, now small entity was a, a definition that was introduced recently, it was introduced in uh, 2014. You have the definition of small entity which has a cross reference to the micro, small and medium enterprises development act of 2006. Again, the third type of definition where there is a reference to an other act, an external act of the parliament. Now, there is a definition of startup. Uh, this was introduced by the 2016 rules. Uh, it is quite an elaborate definition. We can look at the details later. And then you have G, words and expressions used not but not defined in these rules shall have the meaning respectively assigned to them in the act. This is a blanket provision which tells us that if the words and expressions are not specifically defined in the rules, then they take the meaning as they take under the act. So, the act is what will prevail over the rules and the rules are subsidiary to the act and to that extent, whatever definition is contained in the act can apply for the rules as well.